move on. All right, so a psychic went on Fox News to predict Trump's 2024, and you guys got to see this. Let's do just one card. We like that one. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What is that? I, I mean, I, I, I do recognize that I'm at, I'm at Fox TV. I have a sense of loss, a sense of loss, but it, it's very specific. No, 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 let me. Evangelicals, Christians of every denomination and believers of every faith have never had a greater champion, not even close, in the White House than you have right now. I think you know that. Yes. yes. Prayer. Let's pray together, may we? Yes. Mother, to the end so that you can see the rest of the video of the idolization of Donald Trump from ministers, pastors, and everyone else. Well, you know, I hate to break it to you, but unfortunately, a whole lot of evangelicals and especially those that claim to be on the side of righteousness and the side of the Republican Party are nothing but demonic. Yep, I said it. They're demonic because they're the ones that's always talking about de demonizing everybody else that has, you know, that are living in sin out in this world and never no attention is brought upon themselves. They never critique their own selves. They never look at their own selves and say, you know what? I'm wrong about this. I'm wrong about that and whatever. And on Fox news, they brought in a psychic and bring it to predict the outcome of the election. And that's what that was. And for those of you that remember the RNC deal, remember this. Or meet Dylan. I come from a family of sick immigrants. I am honored to share with you, my fellow Republicans and guests tonight, a prayer from my faith tradition practiced by over 25 million worldwide. We recite the Ardas prayer before any new endeavor, giving thanks to God and asking for his protection and help to uphold the values of humility, truth, courage, service, and justice for all. To show respect, we cover our heads when we pray. Tu thakar tum payar das jiyo pind sab teri ras Tum mat pita ham barak tere Tum ri kir pa maisuk knere Koi na jane tum rayant uche te Dear Waheguru, our one true God, we thank you for creating America as a unique haven on this earth where all people are free to worship according to their faith. We seek your blessings and guidance for our beloved country. That was the benediction. That was the benediction of a prayer from a Hindu woman that they, they closed it out with a Hindu prayer. And while we're on the Hinduism and all of that in Sugarland, Texas, somebody brought it up. I did not know that they erected a 90 foot statue, the third largest statue in the state, in the nation, a 90 foot statue of Hunaman or whatever. I think that's his name, Human or whatever. I can't think of the God's name, but it's half monkey, half, uh, uh, half man or whatever, this God or whatever erected in Texas and things. And as you can see here on the video, As you see that, you see that video, that's the video of this God that they've erected there. Now in the United States and things, we do have freedom of religion. We do have that. So, you know, we do have mosque here. We have everybody, you know, the Mormon churches. We have all of that. We have various religions, freedom of religion or so. But here's the thing. Unfortunately, evangelicals, just like Robert Jeffress, 
as we talked about in some previous videos where he's got a Trump shrine in his office with dozens of pictures and, and cufflinks and all of these different things of Trump and a, like a big old poster hanging up in there. I, I can't remember how, what, an 18 foot, nine foot poster or whatever, it was Trump within his office, a Trump shrine. All this worship. And we talked about his church catching on fire, which I think that, you know, I still believe that, you know, that could be a sign from the Lord and things. If you want to watch that video, I have it up here for you to watch. And it'll be at the end that you can watch that video where we talked about that. But Robert Jeffers is still in the news because all of this chaos is in the Texas and stuff. And he's one of the main people in the forefront. One of the main ones in the forefront that continues to push idol worship. He continues to push lies, him and all of his buddies, from behind a pulpit, from behind news media, from behind all of anywhere that they can get a platform. And people come to their churches and listen, or whatever platform they're on, and listen to these lies. And while you've got this deal going on, that this, the party, the, 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 the why I say they're demonic and things like that. The Republic, this current generation of the, this, this is not the normal. And we're going to talk about that because it was, as we talked about that with these other uh, YouTube uh, teachers and spewed pastors and things that talked about this in such a way of, well, you've got to vote this way and things like that. Well, you know, we're going to deal with that and I'm putting the notes together, so we'll deal with it. But these folks are demonic because They've allowed the traditional values that the Republican Party had at one point, they brushed it aside, pushed it aside, and allowed heresy and all types of craziness because the church has allowed this to happen through these types of people that shouldn't be pastoring because it's time for Robert Jefferson, all of Tony Perkins, and all of these people to have a seat. It's time for a new breed of people to be up, new generation. You know, it, it's a time for a new generation of leaders that are going to stand on God's word and not compromise God's word and not involve themselves into the political realm and trying to twist arms to get what they want, because that's all it is. And that's what Robert Jeffers is and all of these folks are about. So they're, so they're demonic because at the helm, now this MAGA stuff didn't come in and this MAGA movement is nothing but demonic because it's a perverted, as I always say, form of Christianity. John Jr. and all of them incorporating, dealing with false prophets, as we talked about in this video, where they want to put a false prophet in the White House if he gets in there. Eric called me at one point and he said, hey, um, I, I don't know everybody in the Bible space and the prophetic space and the whole thing, but can we organize a prayer, a prayer call for my dad with a handful of folks? And I said, sure. You know, and it was trying to make everybody's schedules work. But again, for the president's son to ask to organize a night of prayer, that's just not normal of what you would expect. Uh, and it, it shows that God is moving on him. His wife, uh, Laura, she has said this publicly many times. She views the entire series of events that we're facing as a, a spiritual battle. So again, I, I do believe, and I've said this on your show and other shows, I feel like the purpose of the Reawaken Tour is to flip the org chart where you have God at the top, prophets second and then the politicians third so what am i saying in my perfect org chart you have god in the room which god is omnipresent he's omniscient he's omnipotent right god is everywhere but you'd have god and then you have the prophets and then you would have president trump listening to them and and treating them in the same way that he might talk to the secretary of defense or the same way that he might talk to um Maybe the, the head of Homeland Security or the way he may talk to, you know, I, I would like to see President Trump have a prophet in his cabinet, if that makes any sense. And so that's what I've been trying to do. And that's why, Julie, you know, I've tried to introduce you um, at certain events to certain people. And I'm so glad to see them. They, they hit it off with you and they've been on your program. And so that's what we're doing. And you see, so who was behind this woman saying a Hindu prayer? And, and, and at this event, who was behind that? Out of all of the people in the RNC and all of that, nobody could say, you know what, that, you know, we're not going to have closed that out, you know, with a prayer like this. You know, we're, we're the family that we believe in Christian dome and, and, and wearing our crosses and, you know, that this nation was founded on a, a Christian uh, foundation and all of these things, which is a lie. The founding, we always talk about that. They're good for spreading that lie that this that, you know, that, that it was founded as a Christian nation. 
and things like that. And then you close it out like that and things. So basically, their God, as I say, their, their God, it may not be this 90 foot Hindu statue, half man, half monkey, but their God is a man in a suit, in, in, in a, in a two-piece suit with red ties and going around lying and using Christians for their own gain. And, and these leaders and Robert Jeffers and any other pastor or any other internet person that lifts this man up just like this 90-foot statue and do that, they're doing idol worship just like as any uh, no different from this statue. So the idol worship is in the form of a man named Donald Trump is what's happened to the church. The MAGA movement has allowed this to, the devil has used this movement to infiltrate the church. And pastors and leaders and people within the Christian community have used this and elevated it up and fashioned him into a golden calf. And just like, you know, when Moses was out there on Mount Sinai and the folks totally forgot. I don't know what's happened to these leaders. Were they ever, you know, it makes you wonder where were they ever right with the Lord or did they just start off OK and then got veered off to the right or left? Or were they came into this thing with false intentions from the get go? Because there's a lot of people on YouTube, as we talk about this, got false ministries and things on here. And they've been using and riding this Trump train, like, you know, riding it to the, riding it right to the bank. Lying their tail off. Troy Black is lying more than ever. Now he's begging. He's doing it all because these folks know that for whatever reason, with this man, that they can gain, he's using them. And they're using each other. You name it. And it's going on and on. So here we are. As we close this video out, I want you to see this ad that, that, that showcases the damage that has happened within the church realm and why this man has been lifted up as an idol, just like this half monkey, half uh, a human or whatever it's supposed to be. And, 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 and it's a shame that this has happened. And I want you to take a look at this ad so that you can see for yourself the damage that has been done. Evangelicals, Christians of every denomination and believers of every faith have never had a greater champion, not even close, in the White House than you have right now. I think you know that. Yes. yes. Prayer. Let's pray together, may we? Yes. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Have you ever asked God for forgiveness? Why, why do I have to, you know, repent? Why do I have to ask for forgiveness? Beautiful and godly wisdom have entered into the heart of our president. You ask a lot of stupid questions. I have never seen a more biblical president than I have seen in Donald Trump. So right now, let every demonic network. You are the enemy of the people. Let it be broken. Let it be torn down in the name of Jesus. Here is the Republican platform. And if you don't support me, you're going to be so goddamn that President Trump is not re-elected. Here is the word of God. There is going to be a backlash against people of faith like we cannot imagine. Where do you stand? I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? I watch a man that comes out and fights for righteousness. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. The Pope would have only wished and prayed. Thank you, sir, for uniting our nation and calling us to prayer. That Donald Trump would have been present. I think the Pope needs to seek Donald Trump's forgiveness. He's a pussy. I think God put him there. So get that son of a bitch off the field. Let the angel of the Lord encamp around about him. God raised up, I believe, Donald Trump. To say no to President Trump would be saying no to God. I don't bring God into that picture. I don't. Romans 13 does give President Trump moral authority to use whatever force necessary. I'm going to 
bomb the shit out of them. You need to send in 35,000. Including assassination. This book right here will tell you how to vote. I am confident that the Lord is at work here. Grab him by the pussy. He's, he's had a change of heart. Ridiculous bullshit. If you do not write that P.O. box and you do not call that toll free number, you're going to write your checks to Paula White Ministry. You will never see sustainment in your life and your dream will die. Trump is a test. Whether you're even sane, mm. they can act differently for different people. Somehow God put him in this position. And everybody said, Amen. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. This is a hoax. This is a terrible hoax perpetrated on our country. And there you have it. As it closes out with false teacher pastor, whatever you want to call him, Jim Baker, saying Trump is a test whether you're saved or not. Who talks like that? You see what I'm saying? Who talks like that? Only someone that has been total fallen into a strong delusion and have lost their minds. And that's what has happened, unfortunately, to the evangelicals, many of them, within this realm as we go going around right now. They've lost their minds for one person. And I don't want to hear it of, well, he's the best choice for this or that, because we're going to deal with that. You don't, you, you're going to deal with that. You do not get to try to pull that card that he's the best choice or whatever for right now, better than the whatever. No, you're taking part in wickedness because you've lifted up somebody in such a way to where you can't see anything else. At this stage, it doesn't matter. It goes right back to when he said he can shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and totally, it doesn't even, nothing matters no more. You're so desperate. And Robert Jefferson, and all of them, they're so def desperate to get what they want. A a as far as twisting people in the way that they want, that they'll take it at all costs and don't care what type of, destruction they leave in his path. They don't care. And no wonder, you know, if I was an unsaved person, I was thinking as I made this message, if I was an unsaved person, I mean, the, I wouldn't be thinking. I mean, it would be very difficult to want to come to the Lord. I was just thinking how much heart, uh, when I see the comments from people that don't want to be involved with religion or anymore or anything, they've been hurt shame, you name it. They don't want anything to do with it because they look at people and these leaders and all of these charlatans that are on the internet lying and taking advantage of people. They look at that and say they don't want no part of that. Who wants to belong to something like that? And you know, that's a shame. And you know what? We have to call it out. I don't care who gets mad. I don't care if you call me names and dog me out or do whatever. That's just fine. Because I know I'm standing with the Lord. And I know many of you that watch me and been following me for a while, you're standing with the Lord. We're going to continue to pray that these ministries and these liars are taken down. That the Lord brings their ministry down. That he brings these pastors and all of these frauds down and set them aside. And raise up some new leaders that's going to stand on his word and not continue to damage people and destroy souls. So that's all I have for this particular message, Evangelism for God, the channel where we talk about the issues the church went away from. Take the devil head on, punch him right in between the chops. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.